Hey everyone, welcome to the show. So writer E. Jean Carroll has officially filed her lawsuit against Donald Trump, alleging that he raped her decades ago. Carroll was one of the very first people, by the way, to file this type of suit. This is under the new Adult Survivors Act in the state of New York, which I mentioned before. It removes the barrier to the statute of limitations. And as I've said before, all Trump has to do is provide his DNA sample. That's all he has to do to prove his innocence, because Carol claims she still has the dress that she was wearing that day. Um, as for the special counsel investigation into the classified documents stolen by Trump, special counsel Jack Smith is still assembling his team, but he did respond to a filing that was made by Trump's attorneys. Trump's legal team tried to argue that based on Rudy Giuliani's investigation in case and how his seized documents were handled, that the special master review should continue which was ordered, as you all know, by Judge Eileen Cannon. This was in response to the Department of Justice request to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. They're asking that Court of Appeals to end the special master review. So special counsel Jack Smith responded to Trump's attorney's assertion that this is just like Rudy Giuliani's case. And he pointed out the fact that unlike Trump, Giuliani is an attorney. So investigators would expect to find documents and communication between Giuliani and his clients. That necessitates a special master review. And then Smith also cited the fact that the judge in Giuliani's case didn't prevent the government from reviewing his documents. In fact, it was the government who stepped up and asked for the appointment of a special master because Giuliani is an attorney. So no rulings yet on that, but the appeals panel didn't seem real impressed with Trump's team. Um, and right before that hearing began, Trump's attorneys ran to Judge Cannon to hide under her robe again and tattle. They submitted a new filing with her court requesting once again that they be allowed to see the unsealed copy of the affidavit, which contains all the details that were the basis for the Mar-a-Lago search to begin with, um, you know, including information about potential witnesses. So Trump's attorneys are trying to paint this ominous picture for the judge. They pointed out how the FBI agents requested that the security cameras be turned off during their search of the property. But the DOJ said, well, yeah, I mean, Trump likes to publicly vilify and attack anyone who crosses him. And, you know, how hard would it be for him to disseminate photos, still shots or the whole video of the agents? You know, they could have been leaked by Trump to incite violence, to incite more threats against the FBI than what we already have. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, in regard to the January 6th investigation, the DOJ is saying that they want to interview former Vice President Mike Pence. No word from Pence yet. You know, is he going to punk out like he did with the January 6th Select Committee, which proves once and for all that he's a coward who will never be president. Um, and then speaking of the Select Committee, Kellyanne Conjob was spotted heading into meet with the committee staff members. So according to news reports, Conway wasn't issued a subpoena, at least not one, one that's been made public. Um, and the committee refused to say if she appeared voluntarily. So we don't have many details. Couple of interesting side notes emerge though. Conway is represented by the same attorneys as Pence chief of staff, Mark Short. And Short, as you guys probably know, he's been very vocal in his criticism about how Trump placed all of them at risk on January 6th. Also, as his wife was meeting with the committee, George Conway retweeted an excerpt from a Trump tell-all book. It's, it's called The Big Lie. And he drew a rectangle around a portion of a paragraph from that book in the original tweet that he retweeted. That paragraph stated in part, quote, 
off camera, he took a slightly different tone, even wondering aloud to Kellyanne Conway how he could lose to fucking Joe Biden in what she took as a sign that he understood deep down that he had been defeated, even if he was not ready to say so publicly. So along with that retweet of that book excerpt, Conway wrote, quote, retweeting this for no particular reason today. So clearly that's what her appointment with them was about, what they wanted to get from her, because you have to establish the fact that Trump knew he was lying. You have to establish the fact that he did all of these things, even though he knew he lost the election. It helps. Um, in regard to Trump's upcoming New York trial, the one covering his alleged tax and, and insurance fraud schemes, Trump attorney Alina Haba, she first said last week that Trump and his three adult children who work for the Trump organization would absolutely be in court next year, that they would testify in the trial. Later the same day, she backpedaled. And she told a news outlet, oh, I'm not sure, actually, if they're going to, to testify. So obviously she misspoke and he has no intention of testifying unless he's forced to. And the judge in that case is totally over Trump. He's done with his reindeer games. According to journalists who were in the courtroom, Judge Arthur Engeron, he spoke in what they described as a stern and exasperated tone, and he basically dropped the hammer on Trump's legal team. He said, there's not going to be any further delays. Um, you're wasting your time making these meritless arguments about how this is a politically motivated witch hunt. I've already ruled on this. I've already said I'm not going to do anything to, to stop it. This is moving forward. You know, you're, you're making false claims. So that $250 million lawsuit and trial will begin next October. And you guys may have already heard that the Supreme Court denied Trump's request to block Congress from obtaining his tax returns. So thankfully, those documents will transfer over to that, at least for now, democratically led committee before Republicans take over the House next year. What you may not have heard is that Trump was ordered to pay porn star Stormy Daniels over $54,000 to cover her attorney's fees. Now, unfortunately, Daniels still owes Trump nearly half a million dollars due to a failed lawsuit that was filed by her former criminal attorney, Michael Avenatti. Um, as for the Georgia investigation, both Rudy Giuliani and Senator Lindsey Graham have now testified before the grand jury and we should be seeing something soon. We should be seeing some indictments coming down in the next few weeks, because as I've mentioned before, Attorney General Fonnie Willis, she promised to wrap all of this up by, I believe she said the beginning of December. So we should know pretty soon who, if anyone, the grand jury believes to be guilty of crimes. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Please like, share, subscribe. Please tell your friends, your family. Please donate if you can. It would really help to keep the show going. I appreciate all of you so much. Take care and I'll talk with you soon.